Hey there and welcome, my name is Carlos Berlis and let's start talking about what has been going on in the indie tabletop RPG scene. And as always, I'm not being likely sponsored by anyone here unless explicitly or mentioned otherwise. And some links can be uh, affiliate links, but uh, it gives me some kind of support without costing you any extra. And as always, the links will be in the description together with some timestamps that can help you to jump off the point of your choosing without really watching everything. And to start this time around, we have Unbreakable Revolution, that it's out now, this was released, but for the ones unfamiliar with Unbreakable, it is an anthology made by Asian voices bringing their own stories. And since it brings Asian voices, it comes with no surprise that some RPGC voices are among that. And as I mentioned here more than once, RPGC is the tabletop RPG Southeast Asian community. But without further ado, like this particular issue of Unbreakable has seven adventures from different systems like the Black Hack, Forge in the Dark, Gundam Linger, Iron Sword, and many more. So we have a lot of different contents from a different point of view that is the Asian one that we are most used to European and North American one. And you have from these amazing systems. So check it out. But speaking on releases, we have Dot Dungeon by John Betts Battle. That it's now out and previously it won on kind of a better release, but now you can find the complete game with Marvel's art and more about the game, like Dot Dungeon is a game about traveling through a virtual fantasy world with simple rules. It gets a lot of inspiration from social games like uh, Werewolf and Munchkin and that the real world it will influence the game in word, the virtual world. So it also gets some NPCs and other materials for creating the world that everyone will be inside of. And it was an interesting point to me that the damage that you suffer as a player, it's actually translated into le lessening your connection to the virtual game. It makes sense. And on releases, but this time from RPG Latam, the Latin American tabletop RPG scene, akin to the RPG C, we bring the latest release by Mateus Guax, that is Never Setting Sun. And Never Setting Sun is a system agnostic, enigmatic, and minimalistic scenario that brings a hex map and plenty of seeds to your games. And talking about some marginalized voices, great opportunity for marginalized creators IGDN diversity sponsorship is now open and it is a great initiative because that offers mentorship organized play test and financial support for some marginalized people and the applications can be done up until September 11th and this year around the intended model is to have part-time offline and part-time online. So you have a physical mentorship as well as an online mentorship. So if you are from a marginalized group, consider applying to this great opportunity. I heard some many good experiences with that from some important voices in the scene. And it's not for just tabletop RPG, but other approaches like board games and LARP. So consider it. It's another opportunity to try and bring more diversity voices or diverse voices into our scene. And talking about opportunities, it's kind of a reminder, but Chase Carter from Dicebreaker is always looking for tips, recommendations, and community stories within the board games and tabletop RPG space. And so if you have anything to recommend, you know whom to recommend it to. This is the idea. And also, this week, talking about public, we have public votes for Annie's that are open. And although it's not just about Indies, most time 
we do not have any titles that win, but we may try and change this landscape. Let's vote on indie titles and authors as well that are nominated and not just that. Vote for future judges that will look towards the indie scene and try to change this landscape. And one of the votes for me is like, you have future judges Clayton noticing, for example, and I mentioned him more than once because he has some most than interesting, more than interesting threads, but he is someone that is supposed to look to the indie scene. So although I have a lot of restrictions and criticisms to the Ennies, let's at least try and make the difference that we can and try to vote towards the Indies and to try and benefit the Indies in the long run and future issues of the Ennies. And since the subject of awards was mentioned, let's give a look at Lapis Lunari's RPG award. Well, it is kind of an award. Well, more a solo RPG or perhaps it was just a jest. I cannot be sure, but definitely a jest or a satire at least. And either way, it is an interesting initiative with such a cool look. I mean, this is the indie world, so let's explore different voices and different approaches to anything. So check Lapis Lunaris RPG Award. It's interesting, at least. And as always, you are used to it. We talk about gems. And this time around, we have a gem that is live, that is the BIPOC Vamp gem. The premise is easy. BIPOC creators, it means BIPOC being black, indigenous, and people of color are invited to submit their vampire-inspired games. And if they fall a bit away from the classic European take of Count Dracula and everything, Nosferatu, etc., even better. We need to see more vampires that goes that go away from this different from this traditional take of it and that bring from different cultures because we have a lot of different cultures and a lot of different vampires that we can get inspired by. And on threads, since they are regular here as well, we start with a thread. Some people do not like them, but it's a thread from Twitter. And this time around is from an RPG Latin creator, Duam Murder Hobo Figueroa. And he built a thread from another RPG Latin creator uh, member as well, that is Federico. But when of the introductions from the creators, the idea is the thread. The thread talks about art, but not just creating art. Better than that. It's on tabletop RPGs, commissioning art, and how the commissioning art can change because the original take was from commissioning art but this one develops more on how the creator of games that are usually uh, one person gig how can they can act in a better way to work in an art direction and to have a better outcome from the art they are commissioning and also on the art that is produced to their content so although it aims toward artists and how artists can and should communicate with some major brands and with some other creators. It gets also in the side of how someone that is creating a product can get a better commission and a direction of art towards artists and then both can have a better interaction and a better product in the end. Okay? But since we started with a thread, let's go to a post as well. And this uh, time around, we have a post with a subject that was already mentioned here, but this time in a new light, or at least with a different kind of view and opinion. Chiquita Ferrita, that was mentioned here some other times, writes this week about rolling on attack. How rolling for attack and damage just rolling for attack or just rolling for damage can be compared and how can they influence the game itself, your experience, and how you can implement that in developing your games if you are a creator. Okay, because in the indie scene, we have a lot of creators, not just consumers, with the consumers, 
head to the releases they are the most interesting thing and the gems because with the gems you can just focus on a subject and then see whatever was created towards it but for today i believe that it and if you like the video like the video share subscribe you know how internet works you can pay me a coffee on coffee it helps keeping the lights on you can buy my games on itch.io and my other platforms and let me know in the comments what you liked about the video of today what you don't like what you are liking about the series what you are disliking what you want to see more and all of that and i will see you all in my next video so see ya